No problem. Hi, you guys. Welcome to our Friday beading class. I'm just hitting my button there. Okay, there we go. Um, today's class, we're going to make a really fun hoop earring. And the technique for making these earrings is called netted rope. And it's a um, really, really easy, versatile design. And like so many of our projects, it has the potential to be used for different ideas uh, other than just a hoop earring. So uh, we'll talk about those. We'll show some variations. We'll show some more ideas and uh, talk about colors. And, and of course, we'll get the basics down of the stitch itself. Um, and so um, on my mat here, I'll show you what I've got laid out for materials. Uh, so in the pattern, so the handout uses, um, you know, a blue and a pink color, like an aqua lined purple. They're both size 11 seed beads. So um, you just grab two tubes of size 11 and that's all you need to get started. But of course you can use any colors you want in any kind of, um, you know, patterns you want. When you get advanced with this stitch, there's um, a, a next level you can take it to, which is you can start working with patterns. This stitch has a lot of patterns both free on the web and just ones you can make up as you go. Um, this is a simple stripey one that um, that I just did this morning that just kind of moves moves between three colors and that's really all I did. But it gives you a totally different look. And so there's just lots of great things you can do. And so today's class, we're going to be putting it on, on a hoop earring and the length of this one, the design in the handout is tailored to fit the large one. And this is the one that's in the handout, but this is completely customizable. So if you wanted to make a smaller one, you could totally do that. This is an incredibly flexible rope. You can see how much it's, it bends and you could fit a, a, a muted a minor version on this one or like a medium version here, just anything really. Or um, just before class, we were talking about, there's other hoop options at Michael's. They have these really statement ones, right? This is the small one from this pack. And you can put the design on a, one of these and you don't have to do like a full length one. You could just do the same length we did in the handout. And look how cool that looks. Just a little, you know, um, these are very on trend right now. So just a, a cool idea of something you can try. And um, of course, does it have to be a earrings? It could be a bracelet. Another example that I thought of earlier was bracelet or a necklace. Um, any length would work, but you could just take some leather. I'm showing 1.5 millimeter leather here. And you could run the leather through it and make that into basically anything. Bracelet, necklace, earrings. So once you've got this stitch down, sky's the limit. Whatever ideas you have, they'll probably work. And different size beads will work too. I liked the 11s because it, um, it gives you a, a small, like a compact rope. But uh, for our demo today, I was going to demo our first, you know, run through our first couple run throughs. Actually, do size eight, um, just so it's easy to see. Well, you know, with the these are very tiny, the elevens, you know, to be able to see what I'm doing. I thought, well, we'll, we'll do with the eights the first couple times, and then then we'll switch to our elevens. So, and another thing I'm going to do just for demonstration today, so I can show. Um, each peak bead um, separately. I'm gonna swap the colors for the peak beads back and forth uh, from row to row so that it's super, super clear um, which are where our step ups are. Cause that's the only part of this that's even remotely tricky is trying to figure out where um, one row ends, the next one begins and where that step up needs to happen. So it'll be clearer to see if our peak beads are a different color every row. But of course in this design, I just did the same color that aqua lined purple for a peak bead. Okay, and so I'm gonna lay these out. So this is my main. I'm gonna use blue for my main color. So that would be my uh, S11B, right? It's an eight, but um, S11B there. And then I'm gonna use, my first A will be red. And then I'm gonna alternate it with this A. A yellow A. So I've got two A's on my mat, these guys, and one B. And for beading needles and thread, of course, I'm using our usual, our usual go-to, the Wildfire 0.06. And then I am going to use a size 12 beading needle. I had a size 12 in the handout because this, the 11s, right? Size 11s and size 12s 
eating meals usually are a good complement to each other. Um, but if you're working with eights like I am right now, you could use a 10. Okay, and then length. Um, in the handout, it says to cut about you know 60 to 70 inches. That's more than enough. You could cut more or less. And adding thread is easy, so um, don't even worry about that. If you want to cut just a comfortable working length for you, just know that you can add thread. Super simple. And I'm just using some, you know, my usual precision scissors to cut that. And um, these are some pliers, just regular square chain nose that I'm just flattening my end with. It's that trick that I got from Meredith for making our needles a lot easier to thread. Time for the needle. Gotten through there really easy. Okay, so just go ahead and bring down, you know, some, some amount like seven, four to five, seven inches, something like that. Fold it over and it's worked on a single strand. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just create the starter row. And the starter row, you'll wanna pick up one of your A beads first, and then two of the body beads, one A, and then two, the B, and then one more peak bead, and two more of those. So that's a, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, B. Let's bring that down. And for a tail, you don't need a whole lot. You know, just like something close to, you're gonna need to weave it in. So give yourself seven, seven inches or so. But you don't need to use it for a clasp. So there's no need to leave um, anything more than that. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna come back and go through all of those beads again. Just going through all of those. Okay, continue passed through um, through the next A bead. Sorry, I'm gonna get my, where's my tail? My tail's over here. I'm gonna go through my A bead here. My tail wants to get caught in that loop, see? There we go. And when you pull tight, you'll get a ring. And we've got our tail thread over here and our working thread here. You can reinforce that. And since I'm working with eights, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce it one more time. You may not need to do a reinforcing step with your 11s. The 0.06 wildfire is, is pretty thick inside of an 11 and that helps it stay tight. But if you're working with eights like I am right now, an extra trip through the beads will make um, it a little bit easier to work. All right. And so there's my ring. And now I'm gonna just treat this one as my A because I wanna show you the different rows. So this is gonna become my A bead and these are gonna be my B beads. So I'm gonna go B, A, and B. And that A bead of course is what I'm gonna be calling the peak bead. It's the bead that's gonna form the tip of the triangle that we're gonna use as our, our tip to the net, right? So um, that's what I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Just bring that down. And now we wanna go through the peak bead, which in this case was our red A. And we're gonna do that all the way around. And when you pull tight, you'll notice the bead will kind of either sit on the side like it is for me here, or you can make it come up and sit on top, which is, which is our goal, right? For it to sit kind of like on the side like that. In either case, don't worry about it because when we get to the end over here, you can just give it one more pull to tighten it and it will, it'll work. But what you'll see me doing here is kind of helping it as I go. So I've picked up BAB and I'm going through the A in the first row, the next one. This is the next A in our ring one. And you can see that that's row one because those are, row one was in red and row two, our peak beads are yellow. So here's A and B, sorry, B, <laughs> A and B. And now I need to go through, and this is where people get confused. So I'm just gonna go real slow here. Remember, we wanna go through the full set of three peak beads in row one. But a lot of people get confused and they jump up and they try to go through this one. Do you wanna make sure you go through your last peak bead from that row, from, from row one? 
So once you do that, and you'll know it's you'll know it's time to step up because you have a fork in the road here. You have your ring one going this way, right? And this is the new row that we just made. These are the first B and A that we strung in round two. You need to step up and exit from that peak bead from the A after you get there. And then just pull tight. And now we're ready to start round three. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna switch back to red for our A. So you wanna go B, A, B. And go through the next peak bead in the ring two, which for us here is the yellow. And then you pull tight. I'm just gonna do that two more times. And if you're having any trouble with, um, you know, say you really wanna work with just one color peak bead, something you can do, I'll show you on the next round, is kind of stage your rows. So let me get through this one. Here's my next peak bead. The last one of round two. And here I am again, where I have that fork in the road. I can either go down or up. So I'm gonna step up through those first beads I strung for round three. Okay, and so here's what I mean by staging my rows. I know my next one is gonna be, I'm gonna need to use three peak beads and two body beads. So if you're having any trouble just visualizing or something's going on um, with missing the step ups, try this for a few rows and see if it helps. And it, I find it helped me a lot when I was trying to do a solid color. Meaning like if you didn't want to change color at all, like you want to do it all, all purple or all blue, which is a very cool look. Um, this is something that can help you with that. And so I'm just staging my rows and I'm pulling them up, going through the next one. Next peak bead. And you'll notice after this row, it gets really a lot easier to see the stitch, see the structure and the anatomy of this rope. And seeing the step up becomes easy. I know I just added my last one. So I know it's time for me to make that step up. I go through those, the first B and the first A. And pull tight. And one other tri trick or tip I was gonna share if you're having trouble with the surrounding shape, um, this is a crochet hook. We used it for our last class uh, that we did for like, we did a crochet necklace a little bit ago, not our last class, but you know, a little while ago. And I have found that it really helps me get started. The, with the eights, it's not as bad, but with the 11s, because they're so small and they're moving and they're doing all this stuff, it can really help to work on the hook or any round dowel that you have, something about that size. Would, one little way that it can, you know, it could be helpful. So that's pretty much it. Um, we can start again. Carmi, what do you think about starting again or keep going or? I agree, Danielle. This is a great spot to um, start again. Okay. The people who are getting it, they can, they can keep going and uh, listen to you. And then hopefully a few of them will um, let us know how they did, but yes. Perfect. I, feel, I feel like watching you, I've got it, but I definitely want to see it again. Perfect. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to stage my rows. So I know my row one is going to look like that. Row one is the only one that's different. It's just, it's strung out of order. We put the two B's and then the A, right? Here's row one. It's two B's and an A. And here's my row two. Sorry, the last one of my real one. Okay, Oop. got it. Okay, and now my row, row two is gonna be B, A, and B. I found this just kind of helped me keep track of just that, you know, the first couple of rows, they can be kind of tricky. So, all right, so this is what we're doing here. We're going to string these. Oops, sorry. I should have put that one in front of it. The A, is, the A goes first. It actually probably doesn't matter which order you string it in, but I just want to stick with what I did in the handout. 
And then I'm just going back through all of those, all those again. Leave about a seven inch tail right here so that you can have something to weave in when we're done at the end. And keep going through that first A that we strung and pull tight. And then again, if you're working with a larger bead than an 11, it might be really helpful just to go through all the beads again. So I'm just going to do that really quick. As it does, it moves around a lot. But this extra little trip through, um, it just makes it so much easier. Okay, great. So there we go. We got our first ring ready to go. And now I'm ready for row two. So for row two, I'm going to pick up B, A, and B. And again, I'm using two different A's so you guys can see the different rows apart from each other. And I want to go through my next peak bead. And then here's my B, oh, sorry, um, yeah, B, A, B. Going through the next peak bead here. I need to do one more. And so that tells me this is my last one and I'm gonna have to step up after this. So coming through here. And on this one, I left everything in a flat plane. I didn't try to make them sit just so you can see what, what we're doing. But what happens when I pull tight is they start to move up. And for sure, when I create this next row, they're really gonna pop out as, as going into a cylindrical tube. So there's that. Okay, and so now I've gone through that last peak bead and I know I need to step up here. There's a fork in the road, I go up and exit from that first peak bead of row two. And then I'm gonna stage my next rows here. Oops, okay, there we go. I'm just gonna do that. I'm going through my next peak bead. And it'll sit kind of just, you know, right on top of the last row. And then here's the, this is the last peak bead of row two through there. And I want to step up into the next one. And so then I just continue on. I'm switching my color of peak bead. Go to the next one. And this is the last one for this row. Keep going around. And having a different color really does really does make it easy to see. When you're working with the same color peak bead, it can be confusing when you get to the spot. The tendency to go from here straight into there is really high. So just be mindful of it and watch for it. And if it happens, you'll know right away because it'll stand out as being different. So you can, you know, you can fix it on the spot. Here's my new row. And something about netted rope, if you're loving the stitch and you're seeing the simplicity of it, and you're probably asking like, do I have to only use uh, three points? No, you can make a four point netted rope. And I've never tried a two point, but I, I think that would be possible too. And you can certainly make it even bigger. The, the rope starts to get a little bit unwieldy when you start going higher than um, five points, but that can have its own um, you know, design possibility. See, I just did. When I was talking, I didn't go through the right one. You want to go through the last peak bead and then step up. But yeah, when you start going more than five points, it actually flattens out, which can be a really cool look too. So picture it like it would be just kind of like a double layer, but you know, it could be 
could be like a cool bracelet like that. So you think about trying all these different ideas and um, just post what you create. I'd love to see what everybody comes up with. It's always so amazing. I'm gonna do one more row and then um, Kirby, what do you think? Should we start one more time? Does anyone wanna see it again? Or I, mean, we I, I think um, just so everyone has the perspective, uh, now that you've shown it to them with the biggest size bead, I think you should show it to them with the 11 0. Perfect. Okay, let's do it. All right. Danielle, people are really coming up with some great ideas in the sidebar for what to use for the peak bead. So we're, we're having a good time and we're talking about maybe using a crystal. But one of the good questions is, could you go all the way around and not use a finding and just turn it into a bracelet? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you wanted to do that, when you get to this side, um, you're, what you're going to notice when you get to, to the spot where you want to join it is that you're missing a peak bead that needs to be here. But the one, one thing that would work to get around that, it would complicate your starting row, but you could add that peak bead here when you first create your, your, your first row, and it'll make it a little bit more difficult to get the tension tight. Um, Alternatively, you could take your tail and when you're weaving in your tail, come through and add a peak bead in between each one. Because you'll need that peak bead to join it when you get to the other side. Okay, well, that, that's great advice. I'm hoping that somebody will give that a try um, because they're obviously, they're already seeing the potential to use that, um, you know, to make a full bracelet. Cool, yeah. So Danielle, um, I would love for you to now stick to the pattern, which was your two colors, and then we can really give um, some of our more experienced leaders a look at it tiny and with the two colors. Perfect. Yeah, let's show it with just the two colors. And the reason, that, and just in case anyone joined late, the reason I showed it with two is because I thought it really made it pop to show the different rows separate from each other. Because sometimes, and you saw me do it just during the demo it can be really easy to get confused and not go through that last peak bead and then just kind of skip it and go through the first peak bead of the next row. And it, especially with the 11s, it'll happen to, it happens to me all the time. It'll happen to us all. It's just like, I always skip it and miss it and go through it. And uh, so I'm just gonna get this off the mat here. That was a really full tube of beads there, so. It, Didn't quite make it in the tube. All right. Looked like you put more back in than you took out. That always seems to be the case. Um, I found that if you shake them, don't shake them with the cap on. <laughs> but if you shake them, they go down and settle and you can get more beads in the tube. I've often wondered when people pack beads like at the, um, at the, at the stores if they shake them because they always seem to fit more in than I can get out. Okay, and so just going back to the beginning here, but we're gonna we're gonna use some 11s. And going back to the beginning, I've got about 60 to 70 inches of beading thread to cut, which is plenty, more than enough. You could go a little less if you wanted to, if that's a lot to work with. And I threaded a size 10 beading needle, I'm sorry, size 12, 12 size 12 beading needle. Uh, folded it over. I'm just gonna cut a comfortable length here. I'm using some regular you know, precision scissors and trim that. Oops. There we go. And so for my 11s, um, if it's not too hard to see, I can work with the pattern colors. Would that be helpful, do you think? I think so, Danielle. Okay, because I feel like the light isn't too bad and we can, we can get this to go. These are the, actually, this is purple. I worked with a blue. I worked with these two colors in the original. So let's do it. Let's do it. This will be a challenge for the experienced beaters. Yeah. Okay. And so this is actually my A bead. I probably should have put that first so that it can be understood when I'm saying A, B. So let's move that over. Okay. This is A. And this one is B. And I've got my thread here with my, my size 12 beading needle. And then I'm just going to go ahead and string row one, just one A. 
and then 2b, 1a, 2b, 1a, and then two more b's. And just go back through all those beads again, leaving a seven inch tail. All right. And so there's a ring. I want to continue through that first A. Going through that first A. And what you'll notice right away is that it's a lot tighter um, working with the 11s. And I don't feel like I need to go through the whole thing again. So I'm just going to start going with the next row. And so the next row, you want to start with your B and then an A and then a B. Skip the two Bs and go through the next A. And when you pull tight, if you can, get it to sit on top. And we're going to repeat that again. We're going to go B and then an A and a B. Go through the next A. And I'm going to do one more just like that. A B and an A and a B. And now I want to go through this. A. This is my peak bead here from row one, right? Just that one. Tight. <laughs> okay. And so these are going to be a little loose for the moment but I'm gonna step up now. So we went through the last A that we strung in round one. And now I wanna step up so that I'm exiting from the first A we strung in round two. So to step up, I need to go through the B and the A. And now I'm ready to start round three. And again, if you're having any trouble at all with getting this to um, like form a rounded shape for you, or if even just holding it is becoming annoying. If you have a crochet hook, I put mine right here, or any kind of dowel, it can help just see it if you can put it on a little hook. So if you got one, you can give that a try. Um, now I'm gonna just go through for row three. Row three, I'm gonna do a B and an A and a B. And here you can see that my next peak bead is over here. This is this is row one's peak bead. So we're, we're skipping that, right? And we're going through row two's peak bead. Make sure my tail's not in there. I think my tail's caught. There we go. OK. And when you pull tight, the new row will sit on top of the last one. And your peak beads will kind of like stack on top of each other. Like that, kind of a neat look. Here is the second set of my row three. Coming around, and I want to go through the next peak bead. And here's the last one. It got mooshed. <laughs> All right, there we go. So remembering that you got to skip the, skip that, that's my row one peak bead. I know it, it can look like it's all one big mess. That's why it's hard to have just one color is challenging, but this is right here. What I'm showing here is the last peak bead of round two. So that's round ones, right? And this is round twos. So tiny, <laughs> but there it is. And um, I'm going to go through it and pull tight. And what you see now is you've got this kind of fork in the road, right? You've got the B bead from round two and the first B bead we strung for round three. And we want to step up through that and through the next A. And 
when you do that, you'll get a much, much more cylindrical looking. And if it's at all mushed like mine is, mine is all smooshed up, which can confuse me sometimes. So I, I'll just put it on something around and get it to um, get it to look better. So um, let's keep going. Let's add a few more rows so you can see some of that structure start to show. All right. There's a B and an A and a B. Again, I'm going through that next peak bead. And it's, you know, it's it's kind of easy to see when, when it's holding its round shape, you can definitely tell. This was that peak bead from row, the last row, and this is my new one. And that's the only spot where I feel like I have to think and, you know, pay attention to which one. And now I know I need to do my step up because that was my third add, right? So I want to go through the B and then through the A, I'm just stepping up here. And it's starting to take form, it's starting to take that really cool shape on. And it's the next peak bead there. Danielle, since you're working on this tiny one, mm -hmm. um, just because for a few people, it's still going to be difficult for them to see, would you make a, a really different color? Yeah, let's start a different color. It's, don't start a new one. Just um, keep going, oh, but just keep to going. Make it's it easier like, for everyone to see. Yeah, let's switch to. Yeah, this is why the, the primaries on Zoom, I feel like they just pop a little bit more. They're, they wouldn't be the colors I would have normally chose because they're kind of, you know, they're not, I'm trying to think of the right word. I can't think of it. And I wanted to show, there's just a little mistake here. It looks like I strung my A and then two Bs. So my peak bead here is actually this bead. I, I strung them in the wrong order on that last row. So in that one little case, I'm going through that center bead. If you were working in a solid, like for example, if you didn't change the colors for your peak beads, you would just be going through that center bead, right? So there's my peak bead there. I'm stepping up. I'm gonna start the next row. Do you want me to do a different color here for the next? Okay. So here's a new B color. Thanks, Danielle. I think the best thing you did was show it with the bigger beads first. Um, that made, yeah. you know, obviously that's the easiest way to learn and maybe everyone um, could try doing it with the bigger set um, as a sample first before they tackled the tinier beads. If you're an experienced beater, I know you're going to go right to the 10 or 11 O beads and get going, but uh, I think for some of us newbies, we might have to try it with the bigger beads till we see the stitch forming. Yeah, and of course, also um, keep in mind in person, your view of what I'm doing is going to be a lot better than your view of what I'm doing here over Zoom. In person, the small beads aren't going to throw you off as much um, as as looking at it here on the camera. It's just that it's so small. You know what I mean? It's kind of yes. I think it's easier in person to do those small beads, and they go. Um, they go so far because, sorry, I mixed up the order there. They go really far because you get a lot of 11s in a tube. So you'll get, you know, I don't know, probably, I never counted, but a lot. You could probably make many, many pairs of earrings with just a couple tubes. Okay, and so I switched to making orange my B and making yellow my A. Hoping that that helps with a, with seeing what I'm doing here. So yellow is my A. I'm 
I'm gonna do one more row. Here's this one. And here's that last one where last one in this row. So I know I'm gonna step up now. I'm gonna step up through the B and the A there. You can see how fun it is just to switch colors too. It's a really cool design. And even if you just wanted to work with um, like a little color block. I sat there with all the 11s that I had and just like laid them out in order to figure out what colors I wanted to see together when I was designing these. Of course, I want to make them all. <laughs> so Danielle, just because um, we're, we're great for time, but for our really new beaters, I'm just watching on the sidebar. Um, could you explain the peak bead like in slow motion almost? Why, why there's yeah. a peak bead and um, why it's forming the shape? Yeah, what it's doing is it's forming a triangle. And I'm trying to think of, so this is one of those stitches where showing it flat might help, but it's actually harder flat than round uh, for some reason. It's because you have to make a side. But what basically what we're doing, I wonder if I could, let's see. I'm just going to lay it out with beads. So um, even though we only have one, one body bead in our net, let's just do four for demo purposes so it's big. So there's like one, here's a peak bead, right? And then here's, so think of it as like these little triangles, right? There's one triangle. And then our next row that comes along is going to go through that peak bead, right? So it makes little triangle shapes. Uh, I'm not sure if that is explaining it or being more confusing. Uh, how could I explain it better? Let me think for a second. Um, hmm. It just is easier to see here, but what we've got going here is a triangle, right? And then each new triangle shares that last, the, the tip of the mountain. And then you build another mountain from peak to peak. You're putting another mountain on top and go through this peak. And then you put another mountain on top and go through that peak. And a lot of netted rope designs, especially flat ones, they don't just have one bead here as the body bead. Like they'll have several and then a peak bead and then body beads, right? And then when you come around, it's, it's gonna leave a much bigger gap in the net. And what you'll see is uh, some people can put like a fire polish inside of that, that diamond shape that forms in the net. So there's another variation that is really popular out there. It's an advanced technique, but it's very cool. Thanks, Danielle. I mean, it, it, it is hard to explain orally what you have to see um, visually. So I yeah. think um, uh, I'm glad that in our PDF, we have um, your uh, illustrations. And so I, th I think if we follow the illustration and oh. add the bead in the count that you um, gave us, we'll just make it form. Yeah, that's a good point to, I should have brought that out earlier just to show in case, I know everyone has it, but it um, can can help me explain what I'm, what I'm showing is uh, when we pick up this one, this is our new mountain, right? And we go through the last peak of the, the, the mountain before it. Perfect, I'm gonna follow that illustration. So here's the next row, just kind of, and each one kind of overlaps the last one. So you go through the last mountain peak and you have to travel up the first one we created in that row. And then that's how it just kind of stacks up and up and up. And we've got, I mean, we're okay to start it one more time if that's helpful, um, but I do want to show finishing it because to close it up is, I think we could probably do one more start or we can just show closing. I think we should focus on the closing to be safe. Okay. I have one here that is ready to go that I made earlier. And so remember how when we started the stitch we had two, one, two, one. It just makes it the end of it in the same, um, cause you know, it, it'll splay out. You see how it splays out up here? And as down here, it's a nice um, kind of closed circle. We wanna do this on this side. And so how, how you do that is um, it's really easy. Let me get my needle seems to have fallen off here. Sorry guys, let me get that back on there. And 
And I'm, I'm wondering now where that needle is. <laughs> I hope it's not on the floor. <laughs> I'll find it one way or the other, right? Okay, there we go. I got that threaded. I'm gonna fold that over. Okay, and so all this is here is just a very um, simple continuation of what we were doing. It's a single color. I worked the single A color in yellow. Um, and then, so from here, exiting from that last peak bead, I stepped up, right? I stepped up into the first peak bead of my last row. You can see that little diamond shape there. I want to close it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to string an A bead. I'm only going to string B beads. Two B beads go through the next peak bead. You see, it just pulls my triangle closed at the top there. Same thing again, skipping that A bead. And usually we would go B, A, B. I'm just going B, B. And then going through the next peak. One more time. Do the next peak bead there. And there it is. And it's all closed up. And it looks just like our starting side. It's nice symmetry there. And then just want to weave it in. And so I'll show weaving it in one time because it's the same process to weave in as it is to add new thread. Weaving in, you're just gonna follow your thread path and it doesn't matter where you go really. Um, you just wanna stay where, where your thread already has been. And because it's a round stitch, the opportunity to change direction is not as pronounced, but you can consider changing direction moving up and down. So going up and going down. So from here, I'll just go down a little while. Any kind of zigzag will give you um, a good weave in. So I'm coming up, Ooh, hold tight. I'll go down. And once you've gone around and you've done a little bit of zigzagging for like, I don't know, a few rows, then go ahead and trim your thread. If you were adding thread, of course, you'd want to start building new rows before weaving your old thread in. My usual trick is I'll weave in the new thread. I'll leave my old working thread, just leave it alone for, for the beginning. Weave in my new one, start building some new rows on top, and then take my old thread and weave it up into the new rows. That way you don't get any bulkiness, because this is another one of those flexible, bendable stitches that gets thick when you add more layers of thread, especially through an 11 going to get lots of thicknesses and it's going to get kind of stiff and that flowiness will um, suffer a little bit for that. So you want to make sure and not double up your weave-ins there. I'm going to trim that. You can burn it if you've got a burner, that works great too. And then just repeat that, repeat that with the tail side. So you'll take your tail thread, flatten that. And of course on the tail side, you don't need to close because it's already, we started it closed, right? We, we, we didn't have a peak bead in row one. If you wanted a peak bead in row one, you'd actually have to add two peak beads, which would be kind of weird. But. So here's, I'm exiting from the A bead. So we keep going. Through my next A bead there. Just weave down. And if you wanted to, you could knot, but I um I don't have a great suggestion for where to knot in this design, other than maybe just you know grabbing a thread bridge um, under your next bead and maybe doing like a half hitch. I'll try it now just to see. That does kind of work. So you just want to make sure your thread actually stays, um, you know, doesn't straddle a bead so you don't see it. So there's a half hitch knot kind of hidden in between those two beads. I don't think it detracts from the design at all. So if that's something that you want to try, 
that'll work great. I'm gonna just do it in between any two beads by picking up that thread. And pretty much going through that same spot again, there we go. And so, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. I think it's pretty good. It's got that knot. Okay, so hoops, or hoops. Um, the design on the handout has 31 repeats. Let me show you how to count the repeats really quick. Um, each of these rows, it's a little bit like peyote because it's zigzags. You're gonna need to count two of your peak rows to get your total. So starting here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then flip in it here. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So here's my 31 that is called out in the handout. And it is a good fit for the big hoop on, on this uh, findings pack here. If you wanted to adjust that to fit any of the others, my suggestion would be to test it as you go. So as you're building your rope, go ahead and like, for example, if I was building Let's say I wanted to use a small one and I was building as I go, I would just test it, slide it on there, take a look at it and say, okay, well, I need to go and make at least double what I just made. And then just keep testing it as you go and it should be good. But if you wanted to use the handout call out, that's 31 repeats and it's made to fit the biggest one on that pack. And so I just slide that on, see what happens here. And there you go. And as we were showing earlier, you don't have to use um, even you know a, a fitting hoop. You could let it just kind of hang out. And the other cool idea that was shared um, before we started was, what if you did um, little mini versions of this and then put large hole beads on the hoop? So you could do this kind of like a beaded bead and that would be great strong on like, um, bead stringing wire as well. That's another potential idea, a cool bead stringing wire design, where these are kind of like a beaded bead in between a, like a large hole gemstone or not be a large hole gemstone, I guess, if it's on bead stringing wire, but yeah, um, sky's the limit. Anything that interests you, leather will work, so many great things. Danielle, just looking at the sidebar, um, I don't know about everybody else, but when I saw the picture of these earrings, I thought you did all this work on the finding. So I'm so amazed to see you just slide it on um, <laughs> the hoop, which is great because now I can think of other things that would slide on. Do you ever do anything to secure the ends so it doesn't move when you, you know, uh, are opening and closing it or do you always leave it um, like this? Oh. Well, um, it's a little bit of a tight fit. I, I was, you know, pushing pretty hard. It doesn't move on its own unless you really make it. See, it's on this Perfect. component. Now on another type of, on another type of uh, medium, like leather, for example, it's going to move a little freer. You could secure it. Um, you could put some glue if you wanted, or um, you could, if, for example, if you were doing bead stringing wire, a crimp would stop it from moving. Perfect, thank you. It's People are saying the same things in the sidebar to help, so that's great. Hey, thanks yeah, guys. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so this is just a really fun idea. Um, I had, and I could share, I think what I'll do is I will share it to our Facebook group, but I do have a pattern. If you wanna get next level, I have a pattern for a cool little stripey design. I did some Halloween colors here. I'm gonna put it with a little cat charm whenever I get this done, this is going to be a bracelet for me. I'm going to make a kind of like a bracelet version and I am going to try to put bead streaming wire through it and a little clasp. But this pattern for how to do a stripe, I'll, I'll write it up and post it. I'll try to get that done this weekend. Thank you, Danielle. Sure. That's yeah. Perfect. I think Thank the sidebar, sidebar is good. Uh, we're, you know, we're at the point now where everyone needs to try it. And hopefully they'll share their results um, by posting online uh, their finished pieces. But I think you have a few extra minutes, Danielle, if you want to show people what's coming next. Yeah, let's go ahead and show next week's class. So next week's a little bit advanced. 
but I'm going to just do my, my best to, I'll go through it really slowly, we'll repeat it, and it's a very um, versatile technique, I'm sure you've seen lots of versions of it out there, of just a seed beaded cabochon bezel. And it's a, one of many ways you can do this, there's lots of different ways, and this version uses some size 8 seed beads, and on the back to make it really flat I use some delicas to pull it, to pull it down, pull it in. And then on the front, I use some size 10s, size 10 seed beads, so that it would have a more open to fit the dome kind of like shape. And so it's it's not hard. It looks really complicated, but to be honest, it's basically even count peyote stitch. And that's all it is. Bale's made the same way. It's basically just like a seed beaded peyote tube, like kind of a flap that you fold over. I'll show you guys how, how we did that. And then this is just some cord. I found this at Michael's. It's just cotton, waxed cotton cord. I think it's one millimeter, but anything would work. It's a pretty, pretty good bale. You could always make your bale bigger too, if you want to put it on something that's a little bit uh, bigger gauge. And then um, October 1st, we have another two hour workshop. And that workshop is going to be all about edging. So we're going to show just like all these different ideas. There are so much potential ways you could edge your work. These edge ideas um, will work on any design that has the hole on the side of the bead open on the side. So loom designs, POD designs, flat chenille, any kind of design like that, uh, this edging will work great for. So that's our, our two hour workshop on October 1st. And then that following Friday, we're doing a donut. So um, the donut class is really cool. It um, shows how to do like how to do a herringbone rope that hugs the donut. I know this is something that we've done before in another class, this part. So just to kind of take it up a notch, I'm going to show how to throw another bead in there and make it spiral and then how to attach a donut. Then the week after that, Friday after that, is a, a class called Seed Beaded Clasps and it's going to show how to make a clasp with no findings. Just a, a fun little way to do a cool and, and I'll show how to attach it too. And yeah, and then last but not least, um, we're gonna do a really fun, fast, easy gift earring. So this is a even count, flat, round peyote stitch with size eight seed beads to make a cool little earring design. And then that puts us into November. So, and we uh, we just submitted November, so hopefully I'll have those to show here coming up pretty soon. That's great. Oh, thanks, now. Jesse. <laughs> Thank you. Right, and thanks. then Danielle, I just I want to I want to tell everyone that um, there is a section on Michael's page and Millie just put a link to it on the sidebar. So the premium classes, which are two hours, um, are there. They're not as easy to find, but definitely do look for them because those classes are exclusive and um, we do not post the project PDFs or the video links to them. Only the people who attend those classes will see that information. So definitely look for the premium classes. Yeah, yeah, and those, uh, again, those classes are two hours and uh, we get a lot done in that time where you notice then these ones we're trying to, we're watching the clock, we're making sure we cover everything, but the two hour classes, they're a lot more relaxed. And so we have time to, to really dive into stuff. And they're fun when we get to hang out. So um, yeah, so I, I would like to wish you guys all a great Friday. And thank you again for being here and joining our classes. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Carmi and Millie. And thank you, Nate. <laughs> Have a great weekend, you guys. <laughs>